Welcome back. Today's October 24th, Saturday, and what a day in the news. I just read my three papers, the New York Times, Boston Globe, and the Wall Street Journal, and I have some inspirational stories to share with you. First, I just want to say that I think this feature of me doing the news is helping me. I hope it's helping you too uh, with some inspirational stories and things to think about. I think uh, as I'm listening back to it, I can hear some of my new vocabulary sprouting up different places, just like that word sprout. It's funny how uh, I found that hovering over these new vocabulary words and how I like to talk about color words, uncommon words, starts to have its effect. It's, it's like uh, curating that garden, you know, when you start to, those flowers start to sprout up different places. So it's kind of fun. Also, I start to hear different speakers and different phrasing of speakers that I listen to in my own speaking. So just kind of a, a little aside. Of course, I would love to hear your opinion or if you have any uh, questions or comments about any of the stories I bring up in this series of daily inspiration. Let's start with the Boston Globe. There was an article about the Foghorn Biotech Company, and I still have that as a kind of a back burner target market, the biotech industry and pharmaceutical companies and scientists that are very analytical, but struggle with work-life balance. And that's where I come in with my time management process in my book. Actually, I just finished my new book cover and it's on my website, allthehatswewear.com. And you can see the book and you can download a free copy of a PDF of it. So that's why I kind of track the biotech industry. I read that the Boston Beer Company was smart enough to, to take on truly the um, hard seltzer company, which is huge. And that actually helped them increase their shares 18%. Uh, and now they're over $1,000 per stock. A story about an entrepreneur who donated. The entrepreneur was Jack Shields, and he's a <clears throat> wealthy entrepreneur who donated $5 million to BC High Innovation Center. So that would be a good school to check out too. I always like to have in my pipeline quality programs, people that are on the move, people that are accomplishing things, and they're written about in the news. There was a Globe online uh, event that I'm gonna check out, well, it's, it hasn't happened yet. It's called the Leadership Lunch Series. And that's insights from women of color who have charted groundbreaking paths in many different sectors. So that sounds great if it's a free thing. There were five women honored for volunteer efforts. So another target for people that are on the move and doing good things that I can send my stuff to. An example of empathy was in the news today. There was a company uh, in New Hampshire that does homemade ice cream and they were shut down because they didn't wear masks. They didn't have their employees wear masks. So the uh, Associate Attorney General, Ann Edwards responded, we understand people are getting tired of complying under the emergency order, but this isn't the time to get tired. So I love how she starts with that, seeing the other person's point of view and acknowledging that which is the first step in empathy, and then also stating her view. There was an article about Greta Thunberg, who is the teenage activist. I don't know what country, is it Germany? I have to look that up. But what an example of purpose and mission. And at such a young age, I think she started you know, 10 or 11. And on the world stage, become a figure. I mean, this is like you know, seeing the president, you know, JFK, when he's like, 10 years old, you know, who knows what can happen in the future, but we could be seeing someone of that caliber unfolding right, right in front of our eyes. From the Wall Street Journal, there was an article about the, the candidates for president returning to their core themes. And of course, with mission work, mission statements, and uh, the kind of work I do with helping people with their life purpose, that's crucial too. There is good news about the suicide rate dropping in 2019. And this is the first annual decline in more than a decade. So that's positive, that's surprising given the pandemic. In 2018, the national suicide rate was the highest since 1941 at 14.2 suicides per 100,000 people. 
In 2019, it would drop down to 13.9, which is still extremely high. And this is by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Again, I read the news to see how I can help. And with my time management, productivity products, and coaching and podcasts and everything I do, I'm sure that I could help people steer clear of suicide by developing their purpose and having meaning. An obituary article about Paul Glenn, who, who was a uh, very smart guy. He was a commodity trader, very successful, Harvard Law degree. He had a lifelong interest in extending human life and extending that lifespan. So he always lived a very healthy life. And he, was, he used a lot of his money from commodity trading to start the Glenn Foundation for Medical Research. So it's an inspiration in terms of um, philanthropy when someone can use their money and their good works and their success to contribute to something they feel strongly about and how rewarding that must be to be able to do that. There was a story about how COVID is causing big pharmaceutical companies to work together. And that's completely unheard of usually it seems. So that's powerful. It said that the, another, another article said that this election could be a transformative time in our nation's history. So that's exciting. Transformation is the big word in life coaching. You want to, your goal as a life coach is to help someone find their transformation, not just improve their life, transform. So that word always sticks out to me. There was an article about the benefits of preschool for kids. I always like learning about play and creativity and social skills. There was an article that says that what does outer space smell like? They somehow figured it out. That's pretty interesting. Story of the history of scary stories and why we need them. Leadership lessons from the executive producer of the video game, Valorant. I love hearing about leadership and a story about we're starting to speak like pundits. We copy the language of what we're hearing. As I said at the beginning of this video, you know, you start to, it starts to come out organically, whatever you're fed. So is an example of, of mine is I was really into the TV show, The Blacklist with James Spader. And I knew I was way into it when I started starting, I started to begin every statement with the phrase, I assure you, because that's what James Spader would do. So pay attention to what kind of speaking and language words that are coming up with you and, and look back to what is influencing that. You're feeding that or you're allowing that influence. There's a book called Nature Matrix. That sounds very good. It's all about the beauty of nature and it's very well written. There was a quote from the literature Charlotte Bront Bronte. Life is so constructed that the event does not, cannot, will not match the expectation. Interesting. There's a book called The Path, What Chinese Philosophers Can Teach Us About the Good Life by Michael Pouet. And this is, I think it was number one on the top nonfiction books. I always look in that top 10 list in the paper. So I need to get that from the library. There's an artist, Ali Benissard. I can't say it. And he reflects on our world as it is now in paintings by combining the hellish and the miraculous. I love that juxtaposition. There's a book, Rebecca, of course, about the film from Hitchcock. There's a remake, I guess, on Netflix of this movie, Rebecca. I've been into Alfred Hitchcock lately. I just watched Psycho and geez, what a, what a director, you know, just a master of the art. So I've been wanting to review a lot more Alfred Hitchcock movies. I was watching a YouTube video of David Lynch, another guy I really respect for his interest in transcendental meditation that he started the TM Foundation and well, the David Lynch Foundation, which raises money for TM. And he talked about how, uh, I think it was Rear Window was the movie by Hitchcock that he loved. So I need to see that. 
And the, the other thing I like about this article is that they'll pick a, a book like that and then they research the fashion, the food, the local customs, the design, the locales, all of that information related to the movie. As I said uh, before, the Wall Street Journal weekend edition is loaded with creative stuff. I mean, it's just awesome. Story of uh, the Italian director, Luca Guadagno. And it was 20 odd questions for him, which is a great um, series I like. His favorite drink is gin and tonic, but he uses Monkey 47 gin, which I guess is a very old fashioned gin. So I need to try that. He was asked about what his last meal on earth would be, and he said bread and milk, but the bread would be mishada, which is a white crusty bread workers munch on during breaks, I guess, in Italy. I'm always curious, you know, they always have those <clears throat> website memes about famous criminals and you know, people on death row that what did they choose for their last meal? <laughs> and some of them are very elaborate. I find that to be fascinating. You know, what would you choose for that last meal? And, and in some ways, why would you even care? Or, you know, like everyone has a different spin and it seems to be a very creative uh, question to pose to people. It's like you give them this blank canvas and it's very interesting what people say. Uh, I copied a recipe for chicken and dill stew with eggplant and squash. Feed that chef roll that I have. You know, all of these articles Besides being inspired, I'm looking to improve my roles. So I've got the, I've got those categories that I'm on alert for. From the New York Times, there is a uh, walking tour that sounds fascinating. It's a walking tour you do, I guess, at night at the Greenwood Cemetery in New York City, I guess. It has live, live classical music, kind of like uh, chamber music setting, you know, string quartets and small, small ensembles. And you, you walk through and you hear some of them in, in the catacombs or in the crypts, and you just walk through all of this cemetery and hear this incredible music so specifically chosen for the environment that's gonna be played. I, I love that. And there's a video on it too. There's a uh, website, um, I think it's deathofclassical.com. You can check out a video of it. And lastly, we have the Rite of Spring Ballet is gonna be presented virtually by it's something like six master dancers that are gonna kind of do it separately. But the music of Stravinsky, if you've ever heard Firebird, or Petrushka or the Rite of Spring, just I always found his music to be very lean and colorful and explosive. He's an inspiration for sure. Igor Stravinsky. So those are 27 things to be inspired about from today's news on October 24th, Saturday. For more information, check out my website, allthehatswewear.com. I offer life coaching on productivity, work-life balance, finding your mission, your life purpose, goal setting, overcoming obstacles related to being productive, so check it out and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and LinkedIn, and YouTube. These all, all of these links are on my website, all the hats we wear. Thanks for your time.